So Shannon, uh, another concept that I really wanted to kind of have fun with, and if uh, this is this is kind of breaking models, okay? What I'd like to do is just kind of talk just a little bit about how we show you this huge system of Atlas and how we've built all these teeny little connections and bridges and stuff. But what ends up happening is I want to kind of go back in time and kind of tell you why we got to this level versus, uh, boom, just all, all of a sudden getting here. Okay? So basically what ends up happening is, is your first levels, and I'm basically going to kind of come in here and just kind of do it out, is you have this. Paper and pencil. P-E-I-N-C-I-L. Is that how you spell pencil? <laughs> I'm terrible at that. Okay. So these, what, what, what these are basically is we're going to kind of go over some tools. These are tools that you can use that are very valid right at this very, very second. Okay. So paper and pencil, this is where you normally start. Once you get beyond paper and pencils, guess where you normally go? Spreadsheets. Okay, and what is a spreadsheet? Helps organize information. Okay, watch, watch this real quick. I'm just going to pull open Excel just really fast. It has rows and columns and you can organize data. Okay, so this is really cool. A's, ones, you have stuff like this. The other cool thing is you can actually put in information. So I'm just going to kind of randomly kind of enter some numbers here. The cool thing about a spreadsheet, this is called static information, okay? So if I click on it, it physically says, hey, I am what you say I am, okay? It just physically is that value. The cool thing about a spreadsheet is you can start programming. Okay, so now this little guy right here, I'm just going to put a little line above him to kind of just show you the, the difference here. And actually, let me click here and put the line there. That way you can kind of see that this is a different field. This particular field, now look at this. What does that mean? The sum of all those cells. So okay. now it's not just it's not static anymore. It's dynamic. Basically, exactly. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. This is static. These are just numbers, okay? Now this down here is a formula or starts becoming dynamic. Can you do this on paper? You just, you just went beyond the paper model. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here's the cool piece about a dynamic piece, and I'm actually going to go ahead and put a big old block around this so that this can kind of be like, this is the piece that's going to change, okay? If I change static data, what's going to happen to my formula here? It changes your, the output if you change the input. Correct. Shannon, give me a number. 73. As soon as I move out of this field, I'm expecting this to automatically calculate, correct? Mm -hmm. It instantly went to 94 instead of whatever it was. Okay. So guess what we do inside of Atlas? We record millions and millions and millions of teeny little pieces of static information. If something is wrong, and this really shouldn't be 22 by 222, it should be 225, we say go edit the little teeny static pieces, 255, okay? As soon as I hit enter, it automatically updates something. Do you see how the, the difference between static and dynamic? Uh -huh. Okay, so what happens, what goes beyond a spreadsheet? Because you can make these things do all kinds of cool stuff. Look up stuff, look up different things. Like they can be quite detailed. Um, what goes beyond, uh, here's, here's a question for you. Well, could, can you permission a spreadsheet? Uh, yeah, you probably can. You can, but it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. How many people could be using that spreadsheet at once? One. Okay. You might be able to have a little bit of sharing going on, but you're very limited. You're actually then talking about hard code connecting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, what happens if you have literally millions and millions of pages or millions and millions of records? Do you end up, like, how far does this thing go down? Yeah, you start getting everything. It's all in one fit, uh, one place, and it's right in your face, okay? Yeah. So basically, spreadsheets have awesome stuff, and Atlas actually does a lot of this type of stuff, taking static information. Say this is an invoice amount or a payment amount or whatever it is. It ends up 
dynamically calculating things just in time. The next step beyond a spreadsheet, if you're going to break that model, I could break a spreadsheet in a heartbeat. Guess what? It maxes out at 14,000 rows. Say I had something that was just going nuts and I actually needed a million records. I can't use a spreadsheet anymore. Plus, I wouldn't want to. That's like yeah, very that's tedious. Awesome. Okay, here's the other piece. Okay, so every single thing, we use two columns right here, D and E. Guess what? If I save this, guess how many I'm actually physically saving? 14,000 down and all the way over to probably I, I, I something. Who knows? Okay? So basically what, what I did is the whole layout, I have to have everything, even if I just have just a little teeny bit of data. Okay? So that, it's like, ugh, ugh. Or if I wanted to add something, say I had certain things across, and I'm like, oh, I just need to slide things in. I can add rows or columns, but what if there was things above that were, that were already connected and, and like it gets very cumbersome, okay? So you can basically break that model pretty quick. So let's say that we broke spreadsheets. What's the next level above spreadsheets then? Databases, okay? Now, now what do you get with databases? What are so cool about databases? <laughs> Shannon, I know I, I could say, like, wait a second, I didn't even volunteer for this particular thing. Okay, so let me, let me tell you just really quick. Inside of databases, you technically can start going like, hey, I can have interconnected tables. I can have one table that holds this and another table that holds this, and then I'm able to kind of start going in that direction. Okay? Well, what happens, how do you outgrow databases? And we're not necessarily outgrowing databases, but how does this model break? If I have a database, what if I have it on my machine, but you don't have it? Okay? So all of a sudden, there's, there's a problem as far as, like, where is this data stored? How are we connected? Do you have this software? Can you actually run this database on your machine? You have to then start talking about, do I have these pieces of the puzzle? Another thing that's very interesting is on, on databases, say you started with an access database. Atlas was actually started with an access database, and eventually at some point we're like, Oh my goodness, we need a bigger model. <laughs> we said we need a server database, okay? So basically, um, we actually ended up going clear to like a server-based database. But before that, there's a couple other steps that technically would happen. I'm going to come down right here and put server database in the cloud. Okay? So... The next step after a database is you actually start getting into what's called a software level. Okay? Now, what do you get with software that you may not get with databases? They're kind of connected, but what, what's that next step? Okay. <laughs> Shannon, I, I know you're like, oh my goodness, please stop asking. Okay, I will basically chat for a second and I'll just kind of talk. And I know that this is kind of getting on a technical level, but basically what happens in software, all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a program. I'm going to start physically connecting these tables. I'm going to allow the user to put input in. I could even start permissioning some things out. I can do a bunch of different things like this. Like you start getting into a whole new level of like, wow, I have custom input. I have custom output. I have things that are happening, things that are going on. But eventually, this one will even break. How does this break? And what I'm, what I'm trying to say is as far as like breaking, all of these are very, very valuable. Guess what? I use paper and pencil, paper and pen, every single day. For spreadsheets, I still use them. What I'm just saying is, is where do things go? Like, where do they go? Somewhere it probably have to be loaded onto every computer that you wanted to use it or license it, maybe. Correct. So software. As soon as you say software, you have a disk or a download, and it has to be installed on every single system. All of a sudden, you get into this problem called networking, okay? This is big money. This is IT stuff. And IT stands for information technology, okay, which deals with networks and routers and hubs and physical connections. And then you get into things called VPNs, which is somebody that's outside of your network, they still need to come in, but then they still need to have the software. 
And if there's an update, what happens? This right here software actually breaks a lot with a thing called an update. So right now, if you look at my Microsoft Word version, we're in 2013. Guess what version of Word I have on my computer? 2003. This is a 10-year-old version, okay? So guess what? It's still doing exactly what I want, but can you break these models? What if somebody has a brand spanking new version of the same thing and they say, hey, here's a new file, can you read it? And I'm like, oh no! <laughs> like, I just didn't upgrade because at one, I, I didn't want to spend the money and it was still doing my job. Like, each one of these are awesome, awesome tools and they have a, pers a purpose and a point to them, okay? So as soon as you actually start leaving network and stuff, you're like, oh my goodness, we need to centralize this thing. We need to get into the web, okay? So I'm going to say that the next version is actually web. And server databases actually play right in this general area. Above general databases, you have server databases that kind of start generally playing in these three areas, software, networks, and web, okay? And then basically what you do is you just keep going from there. And then what we do inside of the Atlas is we're like, oh wow, what if you actually wanted to customize all of these pieces? So instead of actually having a piece of software, we centralize the data through server databases. We permission it out. Boom, 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 boom. John, Fred, Sally, you get these different permissions. We also say, hey, cool, let's add settings to this thing. Boom. What do you want to call this? Your customers, you want to call them customers? Awesome. Your clients, you want to do this? We call them this, and basically a bunch of different things. Eventually, you end up getting into the Atlas environment or something similar to it where you're basically on a business platform. I saw that uh, Sandy just came into the meeting. Why don't you tell her we're uh, dreaming and scheming, and if she has any questions, we'd be happy to answer them for her. <laughs> But basically what I wanted to do right here is just kind of lightly go through some of the tools and how some of these tools have great aspects. They literally do. But you can also kind of break some of these models really quick. Pen, paper and pencil, unsearchable. You have to file it. You have to then hold it all locally so you have it. Bunch of things. Spreadsheets, somebody has to design it. Somebody has to do it. Then you have to make sure it gets spread out where you need it to. Databases, you have the same kind of problem. Who made it? Who created it? Who's going to update it? Who's going to tweak it? Software, what's your version? What's going to happen? How much does it cost per license? How much does it cost for all this kind of stuff? What, what, which where? At the bottom. Oh, okay. I, I, I said we're actually kind of getting almost to the business platform level in a way, especially when we actually start. What's beyond Atlas? I would say something like this. An application programming interface. Okay, so what that means is basically, hey, I see all of these pieces of the puzzle. What if I could get it individual functions and features and different things like that and actually take it to that level and actually be like, I want it to look like this, so I'm going to skin it. I'm also going to take it and I say, I want it to do this, so I'm going to modify flow. And then I also want to deal with mapping. How am I going to map this so it actually gets back to those pieces of t those objects and data over time? Return and report. We're literally taking objects to that level. So basically, this has just kind of been a quick little intro to kind of how things develop and how they keep pushing. Uh, there's a lot more that's probably beyond this of where it could still go. But I wanted to kind of show you that Atlas is literally at the server side web. It's a web service. We're starting to get into little micro pieces of this with custom settings and different things. And so we're trying to play at this level. And so we can help overcome some of these pieces. Not that they're bad. I write in my notebook every single day and I use paper and pencil. And guess what? Then I have my sister Shannon retype it back in because I am not near as fast of a typer as I am a writer. Okay? I use this tool every second. I'm not trying to say that they're bad tools. I'm just trying to show you that there are some levels where they eventually break and or something happens. The other piece of the puzzle, as long as I'm just kind of going off and talking for fun, inside of Atlas it's very important that you realize that we use static pieces 
And if, they're, if the data is correct, we say let it flow. If it's not correct, you need to modify it and then move on. If this needs to be modified, watch this. 73.5 will automatically change my dynamic function. So as soon as I move out of that field, either with a tab or, or a click, it automatically adjusted that. So what we do inside of Atlas is we literally have millions of different little pieces that are being chimed in to dynamic just-in-time functions, and then we virtually map back. So here's a piece that's really tough with uh, spreadsheets, another way you can break this model. Do you see any dates right here? Okay, how hard would it be to make a date if I actually want to say, say for instance, 3-1, and this one was 3-5, and this one was another one for 3.5, and this one here was 3.20. Say I had just some random things that were coming in. Can spreadsheets virtually map back in time and say, I'm just looking for everything that was prior or after or before? You have to go to the database level in order to get the date sensitivity, okay? You can break a spreadsheet model, even though it's really cool and it has the dynamic pieces. Inside of Atlas, you technically have all of these static little pieces. So say, for instance, this was uh, payments that you received on invoices. Boom, 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 boom. And then you're depositing it, and then you're doing this. So we're already creating all these cool little ties. But along with each tie comes a date. So that date is very, very important. So our original concept, we were actually talking about time. And so if I go to any of these other pieces and tools, if you enter time into here, can you break this model? Paper and pencil? I put something on paper, I then have to store it. It, it exists. Okay? But time would basically be breaking it. How am I able to search that? Am I able to gather it back together? Am I able to do this stuff? If I put time on a spreadsheet, I might have to have separate little pages. Ding, ding, ding. And then how many times do you want to do that times all the different little players? You, it, it breaks it as soon as you start saying time, okay? Databases, okay, cool. We're starting to get into the elements of time and what's going on. One of the reasons we actually called elements of time inside of Atlas elements of time is we, we thought of two different pieces, okay? And I'm actually going to get clear down to, to this type of thing. This is actually true. This is a feature that actually goes through tons of stuff. You have types. <laughs> you have T-Y-P-E-S and functions. Okay? So if you're actually getting into this huge level where you're actually starting to program a, a program, guess what you're going to end up having? And this is repeated over and over again. So types. We've talked about tons of different types of POs just in the last couple days. Okay? We did a build PO. We are taking internal pieces, raw goods, and then making something else. We had basic live POs, which was vendor specific. We had special POs, which had non-vendor specific or mixed types, okay? Functions, what do these things do? What we ended up doing in elements of time is, is we actually created types and functions. So instead of creating elements of time, hey, this is your scheduler. Guess what? In my mind, scheduling falls into one of these places, okay? Is that a function of it? What if I said, hey, you know what? My time, I need to do rentals or I need to do bookings, I need to do tracking my homework, I'm tracking my projects, okay, those are tracking. What about a to-do list? That's time. And so the reason we didn't call it the Atlas scheduling or the any scheduler type thing, like the any anything, <laughs> is we basically were like, oh my goodness, we need the people to kind of help tell us what is its type and what are its functions and we're going to kind of let you add and build this thing up together. And so that's kind of where some of the brainstorming went um, heading towards time. Once again, we've just kind of been lightly talking about some of the tools, but hopefully they'll kind of help tell you like where we're going. And we're exploring this road. We have no clue where it's going. We literally are trying to pioneer some of this kind of stuff and put it all together into a model and do this. Objects and data over time. Give them an assignment. Make them return and report. If it's incorrect, you go change it. You permission it out so that Johnny can't be in payroll, and Johnny can't be in your balance sheet, and Johnny can't be in your bank, but you do want Johnny right here. Bam, 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 slam, bam. Johnny, run as fast as you can. I've got you contained in the container, okay? 
That's very important. Permissions and settings, objects over time. Like I realize I'm almost kind of talking sci-fi type stuff, but this is the world of Atlas. What are we doing? Where are we headed with it? How can you do it? If you want to see what, what we're doing, what we literally are doing is we're taking these concepts of objects and data over time, and we literally are putting them into a place where it can roll call and say, hey, what do I actually have here? And what are my objects and how are they grouped? What did I sell today? Oh, looks like I was helping Ray out with the small little one for tubes and hoses, okay? What if I wanted to refine this particular search and really tweak it out to kind of be like, hey, I want to actually see everything. So basically it pulled in a date range. What if I said, you know what, let's open this baby up a little bit. What's everything that I've sold in the last couple years, okay? And I hit search these items. <clears throat> I have 146. This is just a small little play site. At any point in time, I can drill down into these little pieces. This is very hard to do with a spreadsheet. M&Ms. Okay, awesome. I have some information here. It's even tied to some smart group buttons that have some special pricing tiered stuff. I saw just the one right below that was Snickers. We tied photos to this one. This one has even extra stuff. Sweet. There's my Snickers. I love it. <laughs> just teasing. Um, my kids actually love it when I tell them stories sometimes. I'll tell them a ghost story or something like this, and I'll do all kinds of fun little creaking and stuff like this. So he is walking up the stairs. Just kind of having fun. He opens the door. And just kind of goes like this. I don't even realize I do it sometimes, but I do tend to kind of get off the, off the thing. Snickers, we've just entered this as a general item. What if you click on usage? Guess what I'm virtually doing? I'm drilling down. What did I have over the past little bit? What do I have coming in, going out? Where are these pieces? Where were they located at? Well, basically, these are all static pieces of data, but if you add them all together, it's basically the exact same as what we're doing right here with static pieces of data and a formula, but we've done it on a huge application and a mapping type level. So that's what we've done inside of Avalis.